Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a simple high-low game for PC and mobile in Unity and welcome to episode 7. In this tutorial we are going to carry on where we left off in the last tutorial and build a sequence where we can constantly recycle this so when we get a card we can choose high or low, get it right, carry on, get it right, carry on, get it wrong, start again. Don't forget, click the subscribe button, click the bell icon as well. Stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So the process for recycling all of this comes down to, you can think of it as a flow chart. So we deal card, we choose either high or low, get it right, choose again, get it right, choose again, get it wrong, start all over again and that starts all over again comes back to it should look like this to begin with so it's kind of recycling the whole time so it's a constant loop so in order to get this down just right we need to deal with the card control script so in here we're going to use sequencing much like we have previously here with the yield return new wait for seconds function or line I should say and allow ourselves to establish yes we're recycling everything here so we have it set as active here if we've got it correct but what we also need this script to recognize is the cards which are available to us so we're going to need to create another set of variables much in the same way we have with the high and low buttons so we will go and say public game object and we need the square brackets because this is going to be an array remember once again it needs to be 0 to 15 0 and 1 are empty so we need 2 to 15 here and or rather 2 to 14 I should say because they're the numbers for it and we are going to call this something sensible um, we'll have these as dealing cards so they're the ones on the left in fact you know what we'll actually put dealing left cards just so we do know where we're going with this and then the same ones for the right side which are the turning cards so game object square brackets for the array turning right cards now what we need to do here is a quick and simple way would just be to copy and paste. I mean, there are multiple different ways of doing all different kinds of code in Unity, and sometimes working out the most efficient way can take longer than working out the quick and convenient way. In this sense, because this is so simple, it doesn't really matter if this script has a hundred lines or a thousand lines, it's not going to make a difference at all on performance. When you get into the realms of tens of thousands of lines, that's when you will start noticing you're going to have to refine it more. So like I say, the amount of code that we're going to write in this script isn't going to matter one iota, not one bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to have all the cards turned off no matter what. And the reason for that is because we're going to redeal, as it were. So at this point, we need to establish the fact that the dealt card number and the new card number are two numbers, different, hopefully. <laughs> as long, well, if they're the same, we know what we're doing with that. Uh, but it's this new card number which is going to become important because that new card number is going to dictate which card will then display on the left-hand side, which is the dealing left card. So let's assume we have uh, guessed high and we've got it correct. So there we go that's displayed we're going to yield return new i'm going to copy that line of code and i'm going to wait for let's say let's say three seconds because i would like to get around to adding a bit of animation to it and a sound effect and all that so we'll give ourselves three seconds to say yep we got it correct what do we do now well what we need to do is place that card over on the left hand side but in order to do that we do need to turn all the cards off and like i said this is going to be a bit tedious we could use a loop if you wanted to i guess it just depends how you want to do it i'm going for quick copy paste convenience really so we need to say all of these cards dealing left and turning right go off so dealing left cards uh, dot set 
active. Oops, we need to put that in there, don't we? Dot set active and false semicolon after close bracket. So what we're essentially doing is we're going to put in here, we need to turn one, two, three, four, five, six, all of them off and then turn on the card we actually need to display. So let's start with two and copy. So while I do this, I'm quickly going to explain why this is going to work. So essentially what we're doing is we are resetting all the cards and I guess in a lot of ways we could also do this as a separate function, you know, another coroutine, I guess, starting a coroutine within a coroutine. But at the end of the day, it's it's quick and easy just to kind of go through here. Again, maybe not the most um, efficient, but I guess I've said before, efficiency doesn't matter too much at this stage because all we're doing is just resetting things. So we have them there. So nine, 10, Jack, Queen, King, and Ace would be 14. So all of those left cards have now been turned off. However, we do need to turn one back on, and that's going to be whatever is in dealt card number. So that means that dealing left cards, and in square brackets, should, sorry, it should be new card number, dot set active true so that now means that whatever we were dealt to begin with and we've chosen high and let's say we've chosen high and the number come out is 10 10 will now turn into that dealt card on the left so then we can guess high and low once again obviously we have to change uh, the dealing cards we've done that so we need to do the turning cards so basically we can do the same once again. So if we say turning cards and we need that to permanently stay off. That should be turning right cards. So you can see here how the sequence is indeed working. So each line represents a new line in the sequence and you can see we're turning all these cards off to reset everything. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and two more. So what I'm going to do is rather than test out now, we're going to type all of this code out and then test to make sure all of this works. So ideal, in an ideal world, this will work perfectly right now. So we've chosen that, we've turned all the cards off. Now we're gonna wait for, let's say another second. So we can use yield, return new, wait for seconds and extra second. At this point, because we've got it right, because it is correct, we need to turn the high and low buttons back on. So at this point, high button dot set active, true. And low button dot set active, false. And save that script. So ultimately what we're doing is all these lines of code, although it looks a bit ridiculous to some degree, I would encourage you to re refine that with what you've learned so far in this series and maybe what you know previously. If you have refined at any point, you no, know, leave a comment because, well, people love reading comments, like, comment, subscribe and all that. So yeah, that now works. So let's use this to our advantage and do the same with the correct if we get a low card. So we can copy all those lines of code. I've said it multiple times. Yes, I know it's not efficient, but this is a simple version. And we place it here. So as long as we get it correct, it's all good. Now, the clever thing that we can do here is we can use the same kind of sequence here. So we're in the incorrect section, but instead of setting high button, low button on, just realized a high button, low button should be true not false. I hope you guys were shouting at me for that one. Both of the high low buttons should be on. 
So we're doing the faults now. So incorrect text section, all of that goes below. And instead of high and low button coming on, we put the deal button on. So deal button dot set active is true. So let's take that line of code all the way up to that, copy it and place it here and save. So let's go over what we've actually done. So up until this point, we know all this works. We know that we're dealt the card. Here we can see, yep, we wait for a second. We've got it right. Then we wait for three seconds because like I said, we're going to create some animation. We're going to create a sound effect to play, you know, card turning and a ding ding or something for getting it right. And all of them go off. It switches the card over to the left hand side and turns all the right cards off and then sets the buttons back on. And if we get it wrong, it does the exact same, but puts the deal button back on. Now, what I'm thinking is we may refine this. Like I say, I've just done this quick, simple copy, paste, stick it in there. We may refine this depending on how you guys feel about all of this. Um, but ultimately, if you do refine it, let people know in the comments because it's a great way to interact with other developers. So let's head back into Unity. Let it refresh, compile, and let's go to settings. And we have our card control script right there. We can see we have dealing left, dealing right. So let's set this to 15 and let's add all of these. So these are the left cards. So these are the card turn, not the card, the guess card deck, aren't they? Because they're the left hand side. So we need to put uh, two in there and add them all in. So the great thing about what we've done at the end of this tutorial is we have pretty much put together the entire sequence that we actually need for this game to function because right now we're going to be able to go constantly through this. This is going to be like an endless loop of being able to guess right or wrong. And let's have the turning cards on the right side as 15 and then do the same. Yeah, so all of this is going to be pretty much done now. So the only real things that we've got left to do is add in all those little extras to make this more of a game. Things like a score, um, all stuff like that. I've missed out five, haven't I? There we go. So I'm thinking the best way for us to go about this is have something called a streak. So we've got a streak of guessing, you know, two cards in a row, three cards, four cards. You know, we'll get around to saving that streak and, uh, as I mentioned, some sound effects and all cool stuff. So added all these in now, let's make sure our sequence works as intended. I've just saved the scene there. So let's press play and check this out. And if we get any bugs or errors, we know where we can go to debug. So deal card for let's guess high. It is high. Correct. OK, so we can see something has gone wrong there. So everything does seem to work, but it has placed the wrong card in the wrong section, it looks like. So it has turned everything off in the guest card deck, uh, but it hasn't turned it off in the other one. So let's check our script and make sure we have this right. So. Let's see here. So as long as we turn all the cards off, it doesn't matter too much. So let's quickly establish what we've done here. So all of these, so left cards, we've turned dealing left card, new card number set active is true, which means if we go to settings and we go to dealing left cards, so this one, there we go. So we have to change that to guess card. So we just need to change that one around. So this line of code now needs to go at the end. And we'll set that as um, that should be turning there. So 
turning. And that should be right. So that will replace everything that is on the left. So we can use that line of code, take it out of there, place it at the bottom, take it out of there, place it at the bottom, and once again, take it out of there and place it at the bottom. So the next thing we need to establish is we need to have the dealt card number become whatever that new card number is. So before we test out our current sequence, we need to change the numbers around because the dealt card number is always going to be the one that gets compared. So the last thing to do would be make dealt card number equal to new card number. So at the very end, after we set the buttons back on, dealt card number equals new card number. And that line of code gets copied and placed in each section because now that will make an infinite loop of being able to guess and get it right. So let's head back into Unity, let it compile, press play, and let's go. So, hi, and we got that right. So that should become four. And, oh, we do need to get rid of that, don't we? So before we go any further, let's actually turn off the correct and incorrect um, buttons, uh, rather text, I should say. So we have correct text dot set active is true. So let's turn that off at the same time that we change the number over. So that's false. And then on this one too, that becomes false. And then also the incorrect text that needs to go as well to false and up to this one where we have the other one and false. So ultimately you can see the sequence of every possible option here. That is essentially why I've done it this way, the long copy paste way, because we can see each sequence of events depending on the possibility of the outcome. So make sure that is saved, head back into Unity, and let's test this one final time. Let's see how far we can get. So let's deal. Seven, I think high. We got that right. So nine should go over here. And I think low. Oh, we got that right. And there we go, six there, high. Oh, we got that wrong, incorrect. So we start again. So there's one more little bug we found. So we have the three there. So it's putting that there. So we need to stop that from occurring and we need to redeal the card. So let's go back into here. And if we get it wrong, so incorrect, that now means that this line of code actually doesn't really need to be there, does it? Because we're resetting. So in the incorrect ones, that gets reset. And logically, I don't even think we need this one. So we can cut that line of code as well, because if we're incorrect, we are literally starting the whole thing again. So we don't need to set anything to carry on that sequence. So for the final, final, final time, let's try and get an incorrect one to see this whole thing work correctly. So deal, I think low. So that should be incorrect. And then we should get the deal button and start again. Seven, high, nope, we're wrong again. Let's try and get the right one now. So deal, six, high, queen, so that should be correct. Brilliant, so queen over here and perfect. Okay, so the whole sequence is now looped and cycled depending on what you choose. We've got that down. So that is pretty much the basics of how to create a high low game. From here, we're gonna go a little bit further and develop this into something a little bit better. So next tutorial, what I'm going to do is add in a scoring system. So we're gonna deal with adding a streak. So we got first one right, we add one. Get the second one right, we add another one. Third one right, we add another one. And if we get it wrong, we go back to zero and start again. So until that next tutorial, thanks very much for watching, guys.